Hi friends, welcome to PDF Tech. Apple just released the M5 MacBook Pro. So today, we're comparing my M1 MacBook Pro with the M4 Pro and the all new M5. Let's see how much faster the M5 MacBook Pro really is. So let's get started. Apple claims the new M5 MacBook Pro is up to six times faster than the M1 MacBook Pro in LLM performance, AI tasks, 3D workloads, AI audio, gaming, and code compiling. So let's see how much faster it actually is compared to my M1 MacBook Pro. Let's start with the visual look. Look-wise, it is exactly the same as the My M1 MacBook Pro as well as M4 MacBook Pro. Here you can see, it has the same HDMI port, Thunderbolt port, and SD card slot on one side, and on the other side, a MagSafe charger, two Thunderbolt ports, and a headphone jack. The only thing missing is Thunderbolt 5, which is available only on the M4 Pro and M4 Max MacBook Pro models. Now let's compare the disk speed test between the M1, M4, and M5 MacBook Pro. Let me run the Blackmagic disk speed test on my MacBook Pro. Here you can see on my M1 Pro 16 inch, it reaches around 6,000 megabytes per second write and about 5,000 megabytes per second read. Now let's take a look at how much faster the M4 and M5 MacBook Pro models are. As you can see, the M4 is around 5,000 megabytes per second for both read and write, while the M5 reaches 6,646 megabytes per second read and 6,369 megabytes per second write, which makes it roughly 24% faster in read speed and 8% faster in write speed compared to my M1 Pro MacBook Pro. And it also outperforms the M4 Pro MacBook Pro by about 12% in read speed and 4% in write speed. Now let me run the Geekbench test on my M1 MacBook Pro. First, I'll run the CPU benchmark. As you can see, the temperature barely reaches 60 degrees. The results are single core score of 2310 and multi core score of 12039. Now I'll run the GPU OpenCL benchmark. The score is 412080. Next, I'll run the Metal GPU benchmark. The score is 79801. Now let's see how much faster the M4 Pro is. It gets a single core score of 3846, and a multi-core score of 22,363. For GPU, it scores around 70,000 in OpenCL and 112,140 in Metal, which is way faster than the M1 Pro. Now let's check the M5. The single core score is 4263, which is even higher. The multi-core score is 17,862, and the Metal score is 76,278. So overall, the M4 Pro is about 62% faster in single-core performance. The M5 is around 80% faster in single-core performance. In multi-core, the M4 Pro is around 116% faster, and the M5 is about 73% faster. For metal GPU performance, the M4 Pro is around 76% faster, and the M5 is around 20% faster compared to the M1 Pro. Now let me test the browser performance with Speedometer 3.1. Let me try it on my M1 Pro MacBook Pro. It shows 33.5. Now let's see the M4 MacBook Pro. It scores 52.8. And now, M5 MacBook Pro comparison number, which is way faster, it scores 61.75. So the M4 MacBook Pro is around 57% faster, and the M5 is about 85% faster compared to the M1 Pro. Now let's see the actual real-world performance on the M1 MacBook Pro. 
Let me open 100 Chrome tabs on my M1 MacBook Pro, see how it handles. And here you can see it still works perfectly using only around 12 gigabytes of RAM and there's no lag at all. So in real life usage, M1 is still a beast. For the developers out there, let me run the Xcode benchmark test. I'm opening terminal and using the benchmark folder downloaded from the Xcode benchmark GitHub page. I'll leave the link in the comments. Now I'm dragging the folder into terminal and typing shbenchmark.sh. Let's see how fast it compiles on my M1 Pro MacBook Pro. And here are the results. It took 188 seconds to complete. Now let's compare that with the M4 Pro and the M5 MacBook Pro. The M4 Pro finishes the same test in 121 seconds, and the M5 completes it in 145 seconds. That means the M4 Pro is about 36% faster, and the M5 is roughly 23% faster than the M1 Pro. So in real-world development workflows, the M5 improvement isn't huge. If you already own an M1 Pro, like I do, you can still comfortably use it for Xcode development. Now let's take a look at the Cinebench benchmarks. First, I'm going to run the Cinebench GPU test on my M1 Pro MacBook Pro. Here you can see it scores around 1504. Now let's compare that to the newer models. The M5 scores about 5768. And the M4 scores around 3970. So in GPU performance, the M5 is roughly three times faster and the M4 is about 1.6 times faster than my M1 Pro. Next, let's check the Cinebench single-core performance. On my M1 Pro, the temperature barely touches 70 degrees. And the single-core score comes in at around 101. Now comparing that with the new machines, the M5 hits 198, and the M4 scores 176. So the M5 is about 96% faster, and the M4 is around 74% faster in single core speed. Finally, let's run the multi-core test. On the M1 Pro, the temperature climbs up to around 90 degrees. And the score comes out to 788. Now looking at the newer models, the M5 scores 1164. And the M4 scores 962. So the M5 is roughly 47% faster, while the M4 is about 22% faster in multi-core performance. Now let's jump into some real-world performance tests on my M1 Pro MacBook Pro and see if this machine still holds up today. First, Photoshop. You can see it opens super fast. No lag when zooming in or out, even on a large 5000 by 2000 pixel file. And the export? done in just a couple of seconds. Still crazy fast for a 2021 chip. Next up, Illustrator. It takes a little longer to launch than Photoshop, but it still opens smoothly with zero issues. I exported a 5000 by 5000 vector file, and again, it handled it instantly. So for graphic design, the M1 Pro is still a beast.
Now Figma, UI UX designers, this one's for you. Figma launches almost instantly. No lag while zooming or navigating through large projects. I exported 37 full-size web pages and it finished in just a few seconds. Honestly, that's impressive for any laptop. Next, Framer. It opens instantly and everything feels super smooth, even when working with complex layers. I exported a web page at two times size and the export was almost instant. So if you're building websites, the M1 Pro still delivers. Now for the video editors, Premiere Pro. It launches quickly, my project loads instantly, and the export time shocked me. This 2.4 minute clip finished in just 1.8 seconds. That's insane speed for an older Mac. After Effects, opens fast, the project loads quickly, and even a complex animation rendered in only two minutes. For motion graphics work, the M1 Pro still holds strong. So in real world everyday use, design, UI UX, web building, video editing, motion graphics, the M1 Pro is still a very capable machine. If you already own it, you don't need to rush for an upgrade unless you want those big benchmark numbers or you're hitting limitations in heavy workloads. Now let's break down the actual on-paper differences between the M5, M4 Pro, and M1 Pro MacBook Pro. All three have different chip designs. The M5 and M1 Pro both come with 10 CPU cores, while the M4 Pro is the only one with a 14 core CPU, giving it a noticeable edge in multi-core workloads. Next up, battery life. This is where the M5 wins big. The M5 delivers up to 24 hours, the M4 gets around 22 hours, and the M1 Pro sits at 17 hours. So the M5 has the best efficiency out of the three. Now let's take a look at the CPU architecture. The M5 uses four performance cores and six efficiency cores. The M1 Pro uses eight performance cores and two efficiency cores. The M4 Pro uses 10 performance cores and four efficiency cores. So even though the M5 has fewer performance cores, it's much more optimized per core. Next, memory bandwidth. This is one of the biggest differences. M5 equals 153 gigabytes per second. M1 Pro equals 200 gigabytes per second. M4 Pro equals 273 gigabytes per second. So the M5 actually has the lowest memory bandwidth, even lower than the older M1 Pro, and nowhere close to the M4 Pro. Moving to the display, all three have the same Liquid Retina XDR panel with ProMotion, but the M1 Pro is limited to 500 nits SDR brightness, while both M4 Pro and M5 reach 1000 nits SDR, which is a huge jump for outdoor use. Camera also gets an upgrade. The M1 Pro has a 1080p FaceTime HD camera, while the M4 and M5 get the newer 12 megapixel center stage camera. For audio, the M5 and M4 also support HDMI audio output, something the M1 Pro doesn't do. Now a surprising downside, wireless connectivity. The M5 MacBook Pro only supports Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3. Meanwhile, the M5 iPad Pro actually supports Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 6, which makes the laptop feel outdated in comparison. 
Another drawback, the M5 still does not include Thunderbolt 5, which is available only on the higher-end M4 Pro and M4 Max models. The M5 keeps regular Thunderbolt 4 ports. Finally, let's talk pricing. The new M5 MacBook Pro starts at $1599, which is solid, but if you want a budget option with almost the same CPU and GPU performance, the 15-inch MacBook Air with M4 is an amazing deal at $1199. You get a bigger display, the same 4 performance cores and 6 efficiency cores as the M5, and the only real differences are lower memory bandwidth, 120GB per second, and a 60Hz display instead of 120Hz. For the price, it's honestly a great alternative. Alright guys, that's the wrap up of the comparison between M1, M4 and M5 MacBook Pro. So, so what do you think? Are you planning to upgrade to the new M5 MacBook Pro or are you sticking with your M1 Pro or M4 Pro? Honestly, the M5 brings some huge upgrades, faster single core performance, better Xcode build times, higher browser scores, and really strong real-world responsiveness. But is it worth the upgrade for you? Or would you rather save money and go for the M4 Pro or even the cheaper M4 MacBook Air? Let me know your thoughts in the comments, I'd love to hear what you decide. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you don't miss my next one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!